Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. We all know we have a ton of satellites floating up in space, some we know about, some we may not know about, some controlled by supervillains, I don't know. And every so often we hear about new satellites launched into space, but, but we really never talk so much about the older ones. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the oldest man-made satellite that, that's still up there. And as you know, mankind's race to reach and explore space and land the first man on the moon led to a wide array of technological advancements and significant scientific breakthroughs during the 20th century. And one of the four most efforts taken in pursuit of this goal was launching an artificial satellite that successfully orbited the Earth. And in the 1950s, both the US and the Soviet Union were obsessed with being the first to be the one to do so. And it was to the surprise of the rest of the world when Russia managed to quietly launch what would become the first man-made satellite to orbit our planet, Sputnik 1. Consequently, the US lost the opportunity to claim a place in history as the country responsible for achieving this feat. But while Americans can't pride themselves with being the first in this aspect, aspect of space exploration, they do have the bragging rights for building and launching to space the oldest artificial satellite that remains in orbit to this day. And what I'm referring to is the grapefruit satellite known as the Vanguard 1, the fourth man-made satellite ever to launch into space and orbit Earth. So a little background, the Vanguard 1 was part of a program conceived by the United States Naval Research Laboratory or NRL back in 1955 called the Vanguard Project. At the time, it was intended to be the country's first first satellite program and the main goal was to launch a Vanguard rocket containing the first ever artificial satellite and successfully place it in Earth's orbit. This launch vehicle is comprised of a three-stage rocket which is supposed to be powerful enough to propel a scientific spacecraft beyond Earth's atmosphere and send it off to space. The design of the Vanguard rocket system was adapted into the several rockets built and utilized by Project Vanguard in the years 1957 till 1959. Doing so resulted in the successful launch and placement of as many as three satellites into Earth's orbit, among them, of course, the Vanguard 1. Now, the first Vanguard rocket was planned to blast off into space from Cape Canaveral. However, before the U.S. Navy got far enough with the program, the Soviet Union already completed and developed its own rocket system and artificial orbital satellites, and they proceeded to launch the rocket containing Sputnik 1 into orbit. And of course, in a time where tensions between the U.S. and the Soviet Union were steadily rising, the historical launch of Sputnik 1 symbolized the might and technological superiority of the Russians' over the Americans. Because of this, Western nations grew fearful and anxious over the possibility that the Soviet Union is now more technologically advanced than any other country in the world. And this placed immense public pressure on the U.S. government to replicate and even surpass the communist superpower, sparking what came to be known as a space race between the two rivaling nations. And so when the Vanguard Project scheduled the test launch of Vanguard Test Vehicle 3 on December the 6th, 1957, all eyes were on the U.S. Navy, and it became a public televised event. However, what was supposed to be an iconic display of American power turned into a devastating failure when, just after a few seconds of liftoff, the Vanguard TV-3 crashed and burned into flames. Then came Werner von Braun, a rocket scientist that used to work for Nazi Germany. With the support of the U.S. military, Braun was working on the Jupiter rocket, a launch vehicle largely influenced by the V-2 ballistic missile he previously designed, which he believed had enough power to fly past the Earth's atmosphere. One of von Braun's Jupiter launchers, particularly the Juno one rocket was positioned to send a new rocket into space. And it took them just three months to finish building the satellite they named Explorer 1. So on the 31st of January, 1958, the U.S. finally managed to successfully launch a satellite into orbit when the Explorer 1 lifted off and reached space. After that, it really didn't take too long for the U.S. Navy's Vanguard project to rise from the ashes and set out to officially launch their new satellite as well, the Vanguard 1. Though it would become the fourth man-made satellite to orbit Earth, it was very unique compared to its predecessor because it was the first one ever to be powered by the sun, which meant that it had the potential to transmit data from space for several years, which was unlike the other satellites, which functioned for just a few months. So on March 17, 1958, an aluminum sphere-shaped satellite weighing only three pounds with a diameter of about six inches was launched via a Vanguard rocket system and placed into an elliptical orbit. Now, this was a big deal because the release of Vanguard 1 into space served the purpose of testing the effects of space environments on the satellites and all of its systems while still in Earth's orbit. Aside from that, it was also meant to gather data while revolving around the planet. And to accomplish this, the satellite was equipped with transmitters powered by mercury battery and by solar cells. It was also built with six antennas and featured two thermistors in order to monitor its internal temperature and assess how resistant it was to heat. Now, the Vanguard 1 was originally estimated to stay in orbit for more or less 2,000 years. However, after considering environmental factors such as atmospheric drag and solar radiation, it's now only expected to last, well, a few hundred years, which 
which is still a very long time. It finally stopped transmitting data back to Earth in 1964, seven years after its launch. But even to this day, it continues to circumnavigate Earth and will be celebrating the 60th anniversary of its launch this March 2018. So while the Vanguard 1 was not the first satellite ever to orbit Earth, its intrinsic value as a scientific innovation and the role it played in the competitive space race between US and Russia is pretty significant. So yeah, if Hawkins is right and the Earth is only habitable for another 100 years or so, then at least that little guy will still be up there. Guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. See you later.